Welcome to part 5, Duran Gray All Songs Reviewed. If you haven't seen the other parts, I will put links in the description, and they probably pop up on the other side. We'll be covering quite a bit of uh, music in this video. We'll be reviewing The Unraveling, Arch, and The Vestigious of Scratches. Now with this stage of Duran Gray, we're getting to a point of re-releases, remixing, and redoing songs from their past completely. The band is looking back at their past work for some inspiration. That's what we have with our next set of songs. And please note that any trivia facts I get from these videos are from things that I own, uh, Wikipedia, and most importantly, the Duran Gray Wiki. If you're a fan of Duran Gray, you will love this site as it has a ton of information, lyrics, trivia, all that stuff, and a really good timeline that really helps put everything together for my videos. So if you're a fan of Duran Gray, please check out that website. So we're gonna go on to the unraveling. The unraveling is Duran Gray's second and so far their final EP. Most of the music on here are songs from their past and we have an original song as well. Even though there are older songs on here, some of them I have not reviewed yet because they were hidden away on some singles and I like to do the singles to the very end. But I think with here we can go ahead and review some of those as well since some of the songs are like on old cassettes or something like that. So let's get started with this interesting EP. So we start with the feature song on here, The Unraveling, and it's a good one I have to say. I remember reading a YouTube comment or discussion comment somewhere stating that they didn't like Duran Gray's orchestral phase because Duran Gray doesn't use a real orchestra because those things are expensive. And instead of using a real orchestra, all of the instruments are samples. And that's something we're going to see on this release. This song has something called a pad synth, and I feel like it doesn't try to sound like a real orchestra. I thought they utilized the samples really well and didn't overstep. Uh, we have a cool guitar solo in this one, harmonic minor sounding, mid-tone melodic. Uh, gives the song more breath and just more room compared to the metal roots that, that are within it. And there are some really cool drum parts, nice open hi-hat sounds, and some cool hertas at the end, followed by a really cool bass line. This is a fine little song. It ends a bit abruptly, but uh, it, it'll take a few listens to truly appreciate. I would not say it's an easy listen, which is surprising since it's the name of this release. And I also heard that people don't really like this one, but I think I like it. I'm gonna give this one a good A+. Okay, next one is really interesting. Now, this is a remake of one of the first songs they've ever recorded. And the original was a rejected song from their first release all the way back in part one, Misa. And I listened to their older version first, and much like with all their remakes, it's improved in every other way. This is a way better version, of course. The original is a total rough primitive recording that sounds like a time capsule. You can really, it really feels like you're there with Duran Gray when you hear like just these, these basically kids just recording something the best way they can. Uh, Shinya, he was always a beast at drums. Both parts on both versions are really good. New version adds a guitar solo, believe it or not, which I enjoyed very well. Lyrics of the original one are probably Kyo's most disgusting lyrics, and I would not be surprised if the lyrics were the reason that this was not put on their first release. So, uh, of course, it's in Japanese, so if you want to read the translation, go on ahead at your own risk. And I'm sure Duran Gray is really nostalgic for this song, and I actually think it's pretty good. I give it a B plus. Hey. 
Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few songs since I've already reviewed them. Crow, Kasumi, and Bottom of Death Valley. So these are all updated from the past. Uh, I'm not going to give them a new grade because I feel like they didn't change anything too drastically. But I will talk about them because there are, there are some differences. Since all of these songs are pretty old, they're all uh, much higher quality sound mixing wise and mastering wise than their predecessors. And they implement Duran Gray's new style to them, that metal, that metal roots. It's like the root of their music is metal now and these songs are trying to fit that. Uh, that's not to say that the old style is completely lost on these ones. Sure, there's more metal motifs, but there also still remains little iconic things like drum reverb and their alternative rock sound. Bottom of Death Valley has a cadenza bass, so it's kind of more free than the original. And there's an awesome new guitar solo, I believe. Another cool thing about these songs is that they're written in a way where you can still go back to the original and get different enjoyment. I kind of, I really like that. It's kind of hard to explain. It's like they're new, but they're not really replacing the old tracks, in my opinion. But nonetheless, um, most of it sound quality wise is upgraded. So if you're really into their metal stuff and you kind of like their older stuff, you will probably like these remakes. <laughs> Unknown Lost Despair. So here's a little gem. Uh, this one is also a remake, but I have not reviewed it yet. So I will review it here. And they are choosing to do some pretty old songs. Uh, this one first appeared on their single Jealous as a B track. Uh, so those ones are always the rare songs of uh, these bands. Uh, so for this one, I listened to the old version and the new version back to back for the first time. And overall, I think both versions are pretty solid. And just like the other remakes on here, there are things you can get out of both versions. Uh, the older version being more melody based, uh, higher guitar sounds, while the remake is more heavy, lower guitar sounds, and uh, more interesting vocals. Lunacy vibes are present in the older version, while in the newer, funny enough, the rhythm motifs are still there. So I think both versions you can get something out of, just like the other remakes. Overall though, I give this song a good B+. Okay, and finally we have a remake of the final and a remake of their longest song as of now, as far as I believe, Macabre, um, where likely most of the work on this album went towards, uh, at least it sounds like that to me. I actually have a lot to say here, so I'll start with the final. It's an interesting choice to remake the final, since the original is not too far off of their their current style or their style at this point. Overall, just about everything on this version is better, but there are two things that the original does better than the new version. For instance, Shinya's Hertas are not here and they're replaced with simple eighth notes, which is I found to be a weird, weird choice. And listening to the final live, I see that Shinya does this. He doesn't do the crazy Hertas. And uh, they could have got the quick, quick triplets. And uh, um, another thing that's different is the bridge, basically the climax of the entire song. In the original, Kyo hits something called the leading tone of the key. Um, and in the new version, he hits the tonic instead, which is also something else he would do live. And I'm not sure why they made these choices, because the leading tone is in my opinion, the most emotional note of the key, and they took that out and did something else. Um, but then listening to it live again, I found that Kyo doesn't sing the leading tone on the bridge, he sings the tonic. I'm not sure why they made these choices, um, but other than that, it's still good. Macabre, on the other hand, in my opinion, is improved in every way. 
really, really good bass work on this version, and incredible use of atonality and dissonance. And they even take the risk and end it on a dissonant chord. And this version of Macabre would change my grade. Uh, it would actually make Macabre a gold song. This version is a good replacement for the other one. And they even lengthened it. So yeah, I believe that this version of Macabre is Duran Gray's longest track so far. There are also some unplugged versions of the final and the unraveling on here as well. Uh, with the finals being pretty interesting. So you can give those a listen to if you desire. Alright, we approach album number 9. And again, much like the other releases, I cannot find much personnel on this one. I'm sure it's on the physical release, but it hasn't been posted anywhere online as of the making of this video. Uh, but there's some, there's an interesting rumor about the album cover. This weird looking thing is supposed to be, and you know, brace yourself, viewer discretion. <laughs> this image is supposed to be a decapitated pregnant woman with roots coming out beneath her. So yeah, the reoccurring pregnancy motif in Keo's lyrics might be strong here. And there's also a sense of looking back at their older styles. Um, I remember reading that they were listening to their old stuff a lot and they're going to use a lot of their older style motifs according to those interviews. So just like with the unraveling, they're probably, um, they probably listened to their entire library and then wrote this album. So we might be in for something good. Let's check it out. All right, we're starting off with a pretty good banger. So no intro track on this album. This is a strong song though. It's pretty easy to listen to. The drum part on this one is pretty wild and we have some really cool tremolo guitar in this one as well. The lyrics to this one actually remind me of stuff Kyo would write for ballads. They gravitate more towards the theme of time and I believe that's going to be the main lyrically for this album since they talked about looking back. So I'm already interested because that's I feel like when Kyo writes about time lyrically it's really interesting. The song is a bit short and ends up, but I think that's the intention because the lyrics will ask, who do you see? Question mark. And the abruptness actually kind of leaves like a cliffhanger to the end of the song. So it's like, who's there? And then the camera shifts to whoever's there. So that's a really cool effect. So it gets some extra points for that uh, risky ending. Really good stuff on this one. I give this one an A+. Alright, here we have another good one. And yes, I'm, I'm getting more vibes of their older style already on these first two songs. And that's really refreshing. They're not relying on metal so much. They're kind of expanding the roots of their music. Really, really good drum part on this one. Might be difficult to play this drum part. Um, I'm kind of like confused <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I really like the panning and the reverb of the drum set. And the panning will often change throughout the song, which is really, really cool. This is another easy listening to song. It's not super heavy. Doesn't try to freak you out with its lyrics, the theme of the past, Still carries through lyrically, but I feel that some of it is lost in translation likely. The English translation kind of having trouble making sense of it compared to their other stuff. Uh, I love the melody and the falsetto and the, the lyrics and the singing. So really good stuff there. And yeah, really, really good and really different starting off too. It's almost like they're, they're reborn. I give this one another A+. They're setting the bar pretty high in the early goings of this album. Oh, 
All right, now we move on to a heavy song, or at least it seems that way at first. It's back to their metal grounded songs. Um, at least I thought, but then there's this organ, uh, church organ sound that kind of gives me Malice Miser vibes. And then they mix the grunts with this operatic falsetto, which again reminds me of that opera like album from Malice Miser, which is my favorite album by them. Um, there's a really cool dual guitar solo, and I also feel like there's a different drum mix with this song. There seems to be quite a lot of reverb on these drums, which is reminiscent of their old ways. And there's a long stretch, like a really long stretch of vocal harmonies in this song. I've listened to this song a few times, and I don't think I've summarized it well enough um, because this one requires multiple listens as there's just so much to it. Um, but at the same time, even though it requires multiple listens, it never gets old. So slap this one on repeat as it rightfully deserves to be. And the ending is really cool. And I feel like I teleported to 20 years ago. The sound just changed to like a lunacy upbeat song. So really threw me off guard there. This one is really, really good. I think I'm going to have to, yeah, I think I'm going to have to give this one the gold because it's kind of in a realm of its own compared to the other ones. So yeah, Fish Scales, surprisingly, <laughs> got the gold. All right, we have another really, really good song here. And um, I'm really just waiting for the dip in quality because we've been, we've been getting like a lot of A's. But this one is not a dud. And I will admit that this one is harder to listen to than the last few. But I don't think any of these songs are relying on being easy to listen to, even though you kind of had that in the beginning. I love the panning in the guitars from right to left. The vibe on this song ranges from dark to emotional, and you have really cool sliding sliding guitar styles. Uh, the distortion in the bass guitar actually reminds me a bit of Korn. I love the vocal melody throughout and the calming singing style that this one has, very different from the other songs. I read a comment on this song, and I have to agree that this song sounds like a Death Note song for those familiar with that anime. So really, really good work so far. I find it slightly tiny bit weaker than the last few, but it's still top tier. So I'm going to give this one a solid A. Alright, so this one is pretty good too. It's their upbeat crowd pumper. For this album likely but it's nowhere near as mindless as their other other songs of this style we have this really cool guitar riff playing throughout in fact the guitar work on this album so far has been really good uh, Zahn's guitar tone from Gauze I don't know if you all remember that song um yeah that guitar tone has made its way to this song so it's like whoa they, they brought that weird guitar tone back I also love the mix of falsetto with the screaming as it adds way more layers than just blasting the screams. I also get this strange 80s rock vibe from this one too, which is something I don't think I've ever really had from a Duran Gray song. There's even an 80s like screech around the three minute mark, which is pretty cool. So yeah, this one's another good one. Is it particularly my taste or my style? No but there's still some really, really top tier ideas in this song. Uh, personally, I give this one an A minus. All right, just by looking at the name of the song, I knew I would get some lunacy vibes. It just, it just, it was just hitting me. This is by all means their alternative rock style back and kicking. There is like no 
relying on metal in this song. They are on their high point on composition with this album so far. We have this instrument that I'm not really sure what it is. It might be a cellista or some metallic idiophone, but it gives the song an identity. And you have these really nice broken chords being played on one guitar, and then on another guitar it's more wild, um, and it's going on the other ear. It even goes off time purposely at some points. Very cadenza-like, so very free, very not really bound by the rules of rhythm. Uh, the bass guitar is breathing and opens up, plays some high notes, which is kind of rare in this stage of Durin Gray. And it actually gets a pretty big lead. Great work on the drums too. You have this snare groove followed by some crazy tom grooves. So very cool stuff on the drums. Love the melody throughout and love the simplicity in the lyrics. It's almost like they're more personal. It's like when lyrics, it's like when you wanna say something and you wanna make sure it's understood. That's how the lyrics feel to me on this one. So yeah, this one's freaking good. Um, this one gets a gold for me. It's top tier composing and it's a style I really enjoy listening to. Okay, so I thought a dud would come out after the last one, because what can follow that, right? But no, yet again, we have a song that's not exactly metal and leads more into the realm where I feel Durin Gray composes the best. We have a piano for the song to give this one some identity and to create a soft contrast to the metal motifs that are also in this song. We have reverb drums that are turned up on this one, and I found it funny that I thought that the drum part sounded like a painter just throwing buckets of paint at his canvas. Like when you hear the drums, that's that's what I hear or visualize. And then painting is actually mentioned in the lyrics. So it's like this like painting motif. I really like it. Bassline is really wild in this one. And I was having trouble finding the chords by ear, mainly because the bassline was just doing so much. It's almost like harmonically wild it's pretty cool so really cool du dueling guitar solos again uh both koru and dai uh, that extra pan style where two guitar players play a guitar solo at the same time it's happening here and you know i haven't i haven't even got to the most impressive part and that's the vocals they are insane on this song and in my opinion i think it's his best vocal part so far best lyrics on the album so far as they are not a, they're about like not being able to capture a moment and not being able to live in that moment everything's just passing by really really powerful stuff there's even a name drop minerva which could be referring to a goddess but that's left up to the listener to decide i'm pretty sure it's that though uh this song is an easy gold but i haven't even mentioned the chorus which I just wrote down on my notes, because I write down notes while I'm listening to these songs. On the chorus, I just wrote, that's impossible. <laughs> it kind of broke me. Um, so yeah, that's that's something like I'd really want to like dissect. If Darren Gray releases composition, sheet music, or any notes of this song, I will be on that for sure. This is Darren Gray's best song, in my opinion, so far. And it's in another league from the Golds. So, we're gonna have a series first. I'm gonna give this one two Golds. And everyone should be required to hear the song. So, not a dud. <laughs> We have another really good song here. This one's also uh, interesting lyric-wise. It's about fake people. There's even a callback to Marrow of the Bone in the lyrics. Really great singing here. Um, like really top tier vocal part, despite the difference from the last one. Hearing the two back to back, it's gonna start making you question. Kyo just like got really good at singing. <laughs> like he was already great but he got even better 
uh, which is insane. And it makes you question, is he like the greatest singer of rock? It's making me question that. There's also a really subtle chord change. Actually, a lot of subtle chord changes in this one that caught me off guard. Just when I think the song is about to be generic, they change it up. Very good uh, melodic rhythm in the vocals as well. This is another good song by them. But yeah, this one is a great listen. I give it an A-. minus. Okay, so Midwife. We finally come to a song that I'm not so crazy about. Midwife is much heavier than the previous songs, but still has a bit of a melodic nature in some parts. I particularly like the low vocal overdub and the many overdubs in the vocals. Um, when I compare it to the last few songs on this album, I think this one sits nicely for variety. But when I compare it to the other really, really heavy songs, I think this one falls at about a B for me. But for the Duran Grey fans who really prefer their metal sound, they probably rate this one a lot higher and are happy when this one pops up where it is. So really well placed on the album, but I give it a B. Okay, uh, this one is interesting as well. We're getting into uh, really heaviness on the album. There's a real darkness, real heavy, um, first impression wise. But as the song continues, it'll get more melodic and bring in many different styles that Duran Gray has done over the years. The song is trying to do a whole lot in 4 minutes and 26 seconds, which means it might not be the easiest song to listen to. We have an amazing drum part here with some tom grooves, and a really memorable bass part, as well as some bass tones, and yes, there are contrasting musical styles in this song. I think this one is better appreciated with multiple listens. Personally, I felt it could have been longer to ease the transitions a little easier, uh, but I still think this is a really good song. I give this one a B+. Plus. Okay, so this one is easily a gold, and I'm just going to say that now. Every member of the band kicked ass on this track. Bass line really stood out and is just really groovy. Guitar work on this one is pretty crazy, and you have all of these layers to them. Some constant, some wild. Actually reminds me of something Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin would do. Except, you know, you double that because <laughs> you have two guitarists. Um, so yeah, really good guitar work on this one. Uh, really extremely great vocals on this one. Probably one of their better melodies that they have ever done. Uh, Kyo was already killing it in older albums. And like I said before, he's even better now. I don't know what happened, but he got even better. Um, really good guitar solo on this song. I think that guitar solo is a contender for their best guitar solo. I think it kind of competes with Red. Um, and in the last moments of the song, the acoustic guitar just takes the song away. Really breathtaking. This is a really good song. Um, it gets the gold. Okay, we got another good one for sure. Another contrasting of styles as the heavier section kind of caught me off guard. Uh, there was some screaming, but there was also this operatic sound that Kyo is instilling here. It mixes really well. I love the staccato and the bass line and how it'll take away from the song when needed. So it kind of like, kind of dips the bass sometimes when he's playing staccato. Really cool effect. I also really like the guitar tones in this song. They're very atmospheric, very nice choice. The chord choices themselves on this song are also pretty unique from their other songs. Actually reminds me of stuff that Yoshiki would write. Um, so yeah, this one is a really good solid song. I give this one a solid A.
All right, we have another single on the album, and I've heard that the single version of this song is different than the album version, and according to some discussions, some people like the single version better. So I listened to both versions. If this was the first song you heard on this album, you'd probably think, okay, Duran Gray is just doing their thing. Nothing has really changed. It doesn't really do anything too crazy. Uh, it's very easy to listen to. It's very familiar. It's very uh, standard Duran Gray current era of this time. Really good drum part here. Contrasting verses and choruses. Um, I feel like this one should have been like maybe the first song or somewhere close to the beginning. Uh, I don't think it's well placed on the album, but I think it's one, it's kind of like a comfort song for Duran Gray fans. Like, you've loved what we've given you, this sound. Here is the sound in this song. Let's release that as a single to let the fans know we're still the band that they like. Uh, overall, though, I think for me it's a solid B. It's a good one to show to your friends. All right, now we've reached what I think is their ballad or softer song for this album, and I think it's a really, really good one. And it sets itself apart from the other songs, of course, on this album, and from the other ballads that they've done in the past. It's very atmospheric, and there's even a part with no melody and hardly any harmony. So it's really just the instruments playing, and it really makes you lost in thought. There's this really beautiful ostinato with the acoustic guitar, and it continues through the verse, through the chorus, and through different sections of the song. That's really hard to write. <laughs> it, has, it has to fit every one of those chord changes, so it's really hard. Harder to do than it sounds. You know, and they make it sound so easy. Uh, lyrically, it's really cool, as it's about seeing an old friend, I believe. The lyrics and the overall vibe of the song is very Luna C. We have this Luna C ballad style now. It's a different part of Luna C. I know I bring them up a lot when I talk about Duran Gray, but um, it's like a different side of Luna C is being implemented in the song. Um, we also have this really creative drum set part. Really feels like um, uh, <laughs> this drum part is kind of crazy. It feels like a lot of people are playing his drums like different people. It's like he overdubbed it. I'm not sure if he did, but there's just so many layers and they all add on very seamlessly. And to top it all off, interestingly enough, there's even a live performance where Mr. Sugizo from Lunacy plays violin in this song. And that's a very beautiful live performance. So if you're a fan of Lunacy, and you're like me, you're kind of picking out, okay, maybe they're implementing some lunacy stuff. Then they get Sugizo, I mean, that just tells you right there, right? But yeah, this one is top of the line. I gotta give this one the gold. Lots of gold. All right, now we have The Inferno, which is a heavy song without, I guess you would say, it doesn't have clean vocals. Everything is a scream. Uh, to me, this one is forgettable. It has a nice riff. It has a pretty cool drum part, but I wouldn't call it anything special. I think this one gets a C plus for me. And yes, it's it's not my favorite shade of Duran Gray. Um, not that I don't think they write in this way bad. Like, I don't think they write bad in this style. I just think they write better when when they bring in melody and harmony and all those melodic, melodic things. Uh, but I have appreciated their heavier songs in some albums. When I compare this song to the other songs of this style, it honestly gets lost in the shuffle. So yeah, sorry if, uh, if you're a fan of this one, but I give this one a C+. I still don't think it's bad. Keep in mind, if I give a song a B, that doesn't mean it's bad. It means it's actually great. Uh, C is average. That means I'm indifferent towards it. 
So um, don't get upset. <laughs> Unless I give it a D or an F, that means I hate it. Or I don't like it. But yeah, this one gets a C+. Plus. All right, Revelation of Mankind. Uh, this one is pretty good. Feels like a closure. I feel like Darren Gray likely wrote it that way. There are some really interesting note choices on the bass that create a lot of tension in certain parts. Um, and the chord choices are really excellent in the more melodic parts as well. If you're listening to this song and you feel uneasy all of a sudden, you're like, what? Wait, what? What? It's probably the bass guitar doing some <laughs> some of those note choices. Um, there's also some really cool time changes that actually remind me again of Malice Miser. Uh, and they'll put some, they'll just change the timing of their song. So it's really cool. I really need to put that more in my music. Just change the time. Uh, it's really cool. Overall, I think this one is solid. I give it a A. All right, we're going to move on to two bonus tracks. Uh, these last few didn't come with all of the albums. And uh, what we have here is likely an intermission track that didn't make the cut. Uh, Duran Gray usually puts intermission tracks. And I actually expected one on this album since they're kind of going back to their roots. But we have it here in the bonus track. I actually think this one is a very good intermission track and could have really worked well. It's totally different from anything they've ever done and lends itself more to the post-rock genre, which is that death note sound. And it honestly might be my favorite instrumental track from them. If I were to guess where it would have been placed on the album, it would have been before or after Phenomenon. I think that would be a perfect spot uh, for this song. Yeah, overall I give I give this intermission track an A minus. Really good. All right, this one is pretty hidden, but this song is pretty good and sounds really chaotic and actually reminds me of an earlier song they made on Withering to Death. It's also very easy to listen to, so I'm actually surprised they didn't put it on the album. Um, there's something interesting going on here, um, melody-wise. It's almost like, I feel like it's a medley of some of their older stuff. He uses melody motifs from C and another song uh, on that album as well. It's pretty interesting. Um, I wonder if that's why they didn't put it. Maybe they thought, okay, maybe we shouldn't take melody from our older song. But, you know, they made the song. I would give this one a listen to if you haven't heard it. Personally, I give it an A-. Okay, so we have some bonus stuff uh, with this album. I don't think there's really much to write home about here from what I've heard. Um, it sounds like most of their acoustic tracks just use Keo's vocal tracks rather than him re-singing. And sometimes it's awkward. Uh, sometimes the song will get to a really heavy part um, and it's just played on piano, but he's screaming like there's an entire <laughs> rock band behind him. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, if he were to re-sing it, like if he were to sing the song with a piano, he would probably sing it differently. But I feel like they just, they want to make bonus tracks, so they just use what they have. Uh, the crossover version of Fish Scales is pretty nice. It reminds me of, again, Malice Miser, uh, more so because it uses a drum machine, which is what they used after their drummer passed away. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. All of this is bonus content, so I'm not going to rate it. Uh, I also don't know who made the remixes or the acoustic versions this time. No one is credited 
to my knowledge, um, might have been them, might be Koru, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. So Arch was really good, in my opinion, might even be their best album. Sounds like they really did go back to their roots, and we had a series first. We had a song that scored two golds, which hopefully doesn't become a habit of mine. <laughs> But I really did feel that that song was just that good. Um, it was just really good. I honestly think this might be their best album. From a musicianship. From how um, how much they've grown as musicians. They are definitely their best so far on this album. And they're putting everything they've got. Whereas Gauze, they had help from a lot of experts. Here they are the experts. And that's why I think both of those albums are just really good. But in this album, they're on their own. And I think it probably even surpasses Gauze. So after Arch, Duran Gray released a best of album uh, titled The Prestige of Scratches. And um, that's funny because I see this album all the time when uh, these videos get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> this is where where the whole roots come from. Uh, there's some songs in this collection that I haven't reviewed yet because they were only singles. But I want to save these particular songs for the next part in the series because they're not really redone. They're the same recordings. Um, so I'm just going to say what I think of the collection itself. Are these the best Duran Gray songs? Are they all here? There are 44 tracks <laughs> on this best of and overall i think it's a good collection um i honestly think they had ulterior motives with releasing this one i feel like it's more of a way to preserve their older music uh in regards to rights um and just like how music is modernly distributed that's why there's so many songs on here um even with most of the music, um, most of it here is actually remastered, but some of it isn't. So that makes me think more so that they're using it just to preserve the rights to their songs. Like, uh, I honestly don't know why Beautiful Dirt is on here. Um, that's a, I guess it's an okay song. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I feel like this era of Darren Gray was all about looking back at what they've done. Um, so I'm going to save Insulated World <clears throat> for the next part. Uh, with this era, I feel like they might have been tired of being boxed in that genre of metal um, with the last few albums. And as a result, Arch was very free and we saw the returns of familiar sounds all tied together with their present sound. And the motif and the lyrics about time and all that stuff was just really good. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Darren Gray is actually planning to release another album this year. So there's a good chance that this series will continue for the foreseeable future. As long as Darren Gray's around. I don't know why I thought they would quit. Uh, I honestly thought they might be done and just continue their side projects with an album like maybe 10 years from now or something. But why quit something good, right? Um, yeah. These videos are pretty hard to make, so if you can leave a like and a comment on this video as well as the other videos on this channel, share this video as well. It'll be very helpful for me. Um, spread the Durin Gray love. And anyways, I hope you enjoyed our little time. This is Josh from Phoenix Splash, signing off.